Good day everyone! Welcome to the world of science! So today, we will discuss all about the physical and chemical properties again for its part 2. So, the phase of matter changes depending on the temperature. For example, when water starts to boil, steam or vapor is produced. Although the appearance of water was changed, the water vapor's composition is still similar with that of water in liquid form. It shows how water transforms to one phase to another without changing its composition. The characteristic of a matter that can be readily observed without changing its composition is known as the physical properties. So, but before that, let us know what is a property. What are properties? Matter has observable and measurable qualities. We can use general properties to identify substances. So, the two basic types of properties of matter are physical properties and chemical properties. So, when we say properties, that's it, the observable and the measurable qualities of a certain things. And there are two types of properties of matter, the physical and the chemical properties. Let's discuss it one by one. Let's go first to the physical properties of matter. So, when we say physical properties of matter, Physical properties are used to identify, describe, and classify matter. So, the characteristic of a substance that can be observed using your senses, when we say using our senses, the five senses, the, uh, the sense of, the five senses are the sense of, of smell, so the sense of touch, the sense of taste, the sense of hearing, and the sense of smell. Okay. And the sense of seeing. So, here are some of the physical properties that are used to identify, describe, and classify matter. So, the first is the hardness next the texture next the color next the odor and taste and then the temperature so here are the common physical properties of matter so the hardness what is hardness so when you say hardness it is the ability of a material to be rigid and resist pressure that may cause deformation or change in its shape. So hard materials like the metal, the wood, can be used to construct buildings, buildings, bridges, or other infrastructure. So that's what we call the physical properties in terms of hardness. Next, second property is the brittleness. What is brittleness? Brittleness are materials that when subjected or subjected to high stress or pressure crumble or break easily. So not all hard materials are unbreakable. So, though there are solid materials that when subjected to high stress or pressure crumble or break easily. So, this property is the brittleness. So, glass and porcelain are brittle and can break when dropped or slammed against a hard surface or object. However, they can still be useful even when they break. So, the broken pieces can be arranged as wall decor or as an improvised spikes on walls to protect one's home from 
trespassers. So the next property is the flexibility. What is flexibility? It is the ability of a material to bend without breaking. So some plastics and metals exhibit flexibility. Flexible objects, so like the thin materials, the wires, plastic strings can be used for tying or binding objects and things. So when we say flexibility, it is the ability to bend without breaking. So just, uh, just like the wires okay so flexibility is different from elasticity so when we say elasticity it is the ability of a material to be bent without breaking okay so wait so when we say elasticity, it is the ability of a material to be stretched and back to its original form. So that's it. So elasticity is the ability of a material to be stretched and back to its original form. So, a rubber band is an example of an elastic material. So, flexibility and elasticity are different. When we say flexibility, it is the ability of a material to bend without breaking. However, elasticity is the ability of a material to be stretched and back to its original form. The example is rubber band and also garter. Uh, these materials can be bent, can be stretched, and however, it will be back again to its original form or original shape. Next is the physical properties. So, the next physical properties is the conductivity. So, the conductivity is the ability of a material to allow heat and electricity pass through it. So, metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. So, when we say conductivity, uh, heat and electricity pass through it. So, that's that. It's what we call the conductivity property. Next is the physical property is the malleability. So what is a malleability? So this is the ability of a material that can be hammered into thin sheets. So do you know how a bar of gold can be turned into jewelry? Gold can be hammered into flat sheets until the desired shape of jewelry is obtained. So this property is called malleability. Silver, iron, and aluminum are examples of, mar of malleable materials. So are bottle cups that are made of metal still useful? Yes, they may be used to make a doormat. They may also be hammered into thin sheets to make an improvised tambourine. So, the ability of a material that can be hammered into thin sheets is what we call the malleability. So, just like the gold uh, can be hammered into thin sheets and also the, uh, the bottle cups that are made of metal steel it can be useful and can be hammered into thin sheets wires so next is the ductility it is the ability to drawn into thin wires so ductility some materials also exhibit or exhibit ductility or the ability to be drawn into thin 
thin wires. So this is why most of the electrical wirings are made up of metals because of the physical property called ductility. So next is the porosity. Porosity is the ability of a material to absorb water. So some materials such as paper and cloth can absorb liquid well. So these materials exhibit porosity. Porous materials have plenty of space inside where liquid can be absorbed. So sponge is an example of a material having the ability to absorb water. So more examples of physical. So the size, the shape, the freezing point, boiling point, melting point, magnetism, viscosity, density, luster, and many more. So when we say viscosity, the resistance of a liquid to flowing, to flow. Our examples, low viscosity, the water, the rubbing alcohol, the high viscosity, an example of this is the honey. So chemical properties. So chemical properties are characteristics involved when a water when a substance interacts with another substance to change its chemical makeup. So, these are the flammability, the rusting, the creating gas bubbles, the creating a new chemical product, reactivity with water, and then the pH. So, when we say chemical properties, um, this is a kind of change which produce another substance okay so or creating a new product so when we say chemical properties so most evident when a certain material chemically reacts with another material so for example when we say flammability so this is the Ability of a material to ignite or patch fire. Okay. So, that's what we all today. So, I hope uh, you've learned something about physical and chemical properties. So, just remember when we say physical properties, um, the different... Uh, characteristics of a certain material then when you say chemical properties uh, there is a change of course new product is being created so that's all thank you